Happy World Carnivorous Plant Day. This is the Kaki Kagawa from Japan. In this video, I will discuss breeding of carnivorous plants in the context of Japanese traditional style horticulture. The video quality isn't the best because of my pollen allergy reactions. Waste the season here when I'm making this video, but I hope you enjoy it. Before I get to breeding of carnivorous plants, I will share some background knowledge of traditional style horticulture in Japan. There are many styles of horticulture in the world, and Japan has one that was developed mainly between the 17th century and the 19th century. Horticulture became a large industry in Japan because the plant loving rulers patronized horticulture and the living standard of common people also improved. There was a demand for potted house plants, and domestication and breeding of such plants were done accordingly. People not only appreciated the flowers but also the foliage and everything, and how the plants would look in pots was also important. Terms for various kinds of mutations were coined as people started seeking bizarre looking plants. The style of horticulture from this period is called Koten Enge, which translates into the classic style of horticulture. Koten Enge plants are still cultivated today. Later in the 20th century, wildflowers, called Sanyaso, became mainstream in the Japanese horticulture scene. This new branch of horticulture is more extensive and inclusive than Koten Enge. It includes a wide range of herbs and shrubs which are less domesticated. Actually, there is no clear distinction between Sanyaso and Koten Enge plants. So, what are the styles and aesthetics in traditional Japanese horticulture after all? There are roughly two categories of them as far as I know. One of them puts weight on solidity and robustness of plants. The other focuses on showiness, elegance, or fragility of plants. Now, we will discuss carnivorous plants as sanyaso or even koten enge plants. There are many carnivorous plant cultivars bred in Japan, and a lot of them are simply experimental without having anything Japanese in particular, even though they may have their cultivar names in Japanese. But, of course, there have been attempts to apply the traditional Japanese styles and aesthetics to carnivorous plants. Growing the plants in Japanese pots will do the job to some extent, but that's not good enough. The question is the breeding part. These attempts have been comparatively successful in some of the genera, but not quite so in others. Let's have a look at some examples. Eldravanda Yoshiaki Katagiri has been attempting to establish a red Eldravanda strain that tolerates cold winter by crossing different strains. His breeding program is yet to see a go, but here is a cross between a strain from Kyoto, Japan and one from Botswana. Dionia. Despite the popularity of the genus itself, only a limited number of Dionia breeders in Japan have released cultivars. One of the traits that are appreciated in Japanese cultivars is the lack of erect leaves. Suzuki's selection is one of the most classic Japanese cultivars of Dionia. It was selected by Kichigoro Suzuki, a legend of Sanyaso who owned a nursery called Shinkyuen until 1999. This cultivar has no official name. Suzuki's selection was bred from wild type clones that were introduced probably before the World War II and has a small rosette that remains flat. As an ornamental plant, 
it is nothing compared to spectacular ones that we find today, but people still grow it for its history and rarity. Kyoto Red forms a small flat rosette that turns dark red in autumn. It was selected in vitro by Shigeyuki Mitsuto. Apparently, there are a couple of substrains with minor differences. The sparrow is a rust-believed cultivar originated by Shun Yamashita. It is a cross between a selected clone based on Shippen Steer 1 and an all-red cultivar. The Shura is another rust-believed cultivar from Yamashita. This one was obtained by crossing an all-red offspring of Aspera with another all-red clown. Drosera Drosera has a long history of selective breeding in Japan, but it has always been small-scale. One of the main reasons is that Drosera hybrids can very often be sterile. A lot of Japanese cultivars of the genus are results of hybridization from curiosity. Nagamoto is the world's first ornamental Drosera hybrid created by Jiro Nagamoto, the pioneer of Drosera breeding. It is a hybrid between Drosera anglica from Hokkaido, Japan and Drosera spatulata from Osaka, Japan. Drosera neocaledonica crossed with Alicia Payaflar is an old hybrid from the early 80s by Kazuyoshi Suzuki. The compact plant with multiple erect leaves is easy to cultivate and propagate. Drosera binata dichotoma, Mashimo's red, is an all red clone selected by Yuji Mashimo. Unlike a lot of serendipity cultivars, planning was involved in the making of this one. The leaves remain erect, keeping the plant in shape for a long time. Nepenthes Nepenthes is a popular genus in Japan, but many of the hybrids are experimental rather than planned. Efforts are also made to produce better cultivated clones of species. Mamogasa was selected by Hirofumi Doi a legend of carnivorous plant cultivation at Hyogo Prefecture of Law Center. It is a cross between Nepenthes pervillii and Nepenthes carciana. Dragon Ball is an old cultivar that originated at Isayan, a nursery. It is a hybrid between Nepenthes bolii and the red form of Nepenthes ampullaria. Yasuhide Nakugawa crossed Nepenthes truncata with Nepenthes clipeata. The seeds were then sent to Isayan, a nursery, for selection. This is one of the selected siblings and the same clone as the iconic specimen at Hyogo Prefectural Flower Center. Penguicula Penguicula breeders have struggled for ideal plant-to-flower ratios in Mexican penguicula. To make the entire plant neat and compact, shorter flower scapes are appreciated instead of ones like this. Isogo is an estimated hybrid between penguicula moctezume and penguicula species from Wawapan by Masato Hattori. The plant remains neat with the slightly dark flowers. Shiho is a mystery cultivar that was originally in Akio Shintani's possession. Some people suspect it to be a Pinguicula cyclosector hybrid. This one is a selected sibling of Pinguicula lawiana CP1 crossed with a species from Tolantongo, my own cross. The flowers are slightly metallic and the leaves turn red. Saracenia Roughly speaking, there are at least two breeding strategies in traditional style Japanese cultivars, in my opinion. One is to create something compact and solid looking. 
the other is to aim at something that looks showy and elegant. Adisugata is a classic from Isaiyan, a nursery. This is an old hybrid with Sarosenia leucophila and it is still popular. Kyo Kanoko is another classic. This one was bred at a nursery called Hinode Kardan and the coloration is typically Japanese with a slightly dark down. It is supposed to be a hybrid between Sarosenia leucophila and Sarosenia minor. Sarosenia purpurea venosa marugata number 16 is a selection from a nursery called Ise Hana Shobuen. This selection produces rounder pitches than the ordinary strains. Triantha Triantha japonica has differently colored cultivars. It has been cultivated as a sanyaso, even though it's not yet confirmed as carnivorous. This is a white flowered cultivar, and there is also a pinkish flowered one. Other genera Some carnivorous plant genera are still new to selective breeding in Japan. There aren't many Japanese cultivars in the genera such as Cephalotus, Darlingtonia, Genelicia, Helianthera, or Utericularia. They had not been bred much because not many people were cultivating them in the country. In some cases, the cultivation methods had not been established. But let's hope for some spectacular cultivars of these genera. So, there have been some attempts to apply traditional Japanese styles and aesthetics to carnivorous plants. But it's not easy to find many good examples except in a couple of genera like Deonia, Pinguicula, or Sarasenia because many carnivorous plant genera are still new to selective breeding in Japan. There may be more to come in the future. And let me know if you have any idea about local style cultivars from your country or region. Thank you for watching and happy growing. It's not a surprise that gardeners, educators, and scientists are fascinated by these unique plants. The International Carnivorous Plant Society, or ICPS, not only love these plants, but welcomes growers just getting started all the way through professional scientists. The ICPS even started an annual World Carnivorous Plant Day to celebrate them. The free online event is held the first Wednesday of May. Take a look around our website and you'll find historic documents about carnivorous plants, growing guides, free educational resources, and more. Have questions? Ask. We don't bite, but our plants do.